And finally, we get to end here with pushback and pop back. But it does occur to me, I forgot in the previous video to set back up how to declare and use a vector. So first and foremost, we do need another include. We need the vector library. So that is here for us on this example. It is on line number three. When we're declaring our vector, it is as follows. It is vector, and then the it is less than and greater than signs. And in between those goes the type of your vector. So we can in uh, we can declare rather a vector of integers or characters or doubles or floating point or short. You get the idea. Uh, and then here afterwards the uh, the actual variable name now we can here when we declare our vector we can provide initial values the in very very much the same way we do with an array we can use a comma separated list of values inside of the curly braces um, we also don't have to um, and here in this example i did not specify a size for our vector because again remember that we are we are at the risk of a penalty, uh, a performance penalty and a storage penalty, which performance and storage are dirt cheap. So, you know, um, let your application help you figure out if you have the performance and storage to spare. Um, but here I am not declaring how large a vector values is. So we get an initial sizing for that. And here, with lines 11 through 13, I am using the pushback. What that's going to do is at the back end of our vector, so wherever the vector is, with however many elements have already been defined in our vector, we are going to add the value that's inside of our parentheses there. So I'm going to add a 1, a 2, and a 3. So when we run this finally, I'm going to have it run actually, because it took a while a moment ago, and this time it didn't. Um, I'm going to output the size of values is, and here we can see one of the functions that is baked into vectors the same way that an array knows its size, a vector knows its size. So because I've, um, it, I don't want to say included, because again, that is a keyword. Um, because I have defined that we are pushing back the values one, a pushback of two, a pushback of three. We have three elements in our vector. A pop back, what that does is take however many elements that you have in your array and remove the last of them. It is always the last of them. So if you have a vector with a size of four, we are going to remove element number three, because remember it's n minus one. If I have a vector with size of a million, it is going to remove 999,999 because that is the last one. So that's what pop back does, is actually remove an element from the vector there. So you can use push to add elements to the back end of a vector. And the reason we have the new nomenclature, nomenclature, it's coffee time. Uh, the reason we have the new nomenclature for pushback and popback is there is no, I mean, we can. We can determine every time the size of our array by doing a size check. That's not necessarily something that's going to be convenient inside of the code. That's not something that we can necessarily logically always code accurately. So in order to give us, because of the, the strange mystery that can be how big a vector is because that's the whole point. It can be as large or as small as we need it to be. Pushback and popback allow us to either simply add another element or remove the last element, which is really powerful when we don't know how many elements are actually contained in the vector.